from Bramlage Coliseum in Manhattan, Kansas. Number two, Baylor, 4-0 on the season, their conference opener, as they take on 3-4 and 4 and 1-0 and in conference play, Kansas State. Along with former Oklahoma State guard Brendan Manzer, I'm Mark Neely, Bears taking the floor, and K-State coming off an impressive win on Tuesday against Iowa State. But Brendan, how big a deal is it that due to COVID protocol, Scott Drew's team is playing today for the first time in 10 days? Well, I think it'll be uh, interesting to see you know how sharp they are you have a young k-state team that's as confident as they've been all year big win in Ames on tuesday night coming back home and scott drew's team was shut down completely for five days from basketball activities we're able to practice thursday and friday in preparation for this afternoon and i think he's as interested as you and i to see how baylor comes out here after uh, the layoff Bears wearing the dark gray uniforms. K-State in the home white. And Baylor with the game's first possession. In the last game, 10 days ago for Baylor when they beat Stephen F. Austin at the Farrell Center in Waco. Mitchell loses it, and it's grabbed by Deshaun Gordon, and the Bears turn it over on their first possession. Now, one of the reasons K-State was able to win in Ames is their defensive effort was the best that had been all season long. Well, McGurl's pass is picked off, and Butler takes it the other way and lays it in for the game's first points. Well, Baylor, in that game 10 days ago against Stephen F. Austin, Turned the Lumberjacks over 35 times and ended up with 40 points off those turnovers. Obviously, it's well documented, particularly on the perimeter mark, that Baylor outstanding on the defensive end. And again, case in point, there's a five-second call and a turnover for K-State. Bruce Weber's team did a number of things better on Tuesday in Ames, played better defense, which was job number one. But the other thing was they were lights out from the free throw line, hitting 26 to 29, and that was a difference in the game. Look at the Baylor starting five, same starting five now for all five games this season for the Bears, and Thamba underneath is fouled by Pack. Well, they'll have their fans full. You see Scott Drew right there. We talked to him. Prior to this game, Mark, you, you could sense that he was uh, curious how the team would, re would respond today, understandably so. Well, our conversation with Scott Drew happened to come at the same time as the Iowa State-West Virginia game was ending last night on ESPNU. And Scott's point right away was, you can see what can happen. Iowa State was a heavy underdog in Morgantown, and he was kind of translating that to today's game here in Manhattan. Well, particularly this year, I, you know, I think any year, right, Mark, in the Big 12 Conference, you play eight no conference games, 13 or 14 of them. It doesn't matter if you're Kansas or Baylor or who. They're going to come down to that last three or four minutes. And this year, I think, adds a different element, maybe a little more equalizing when the gap between teams like a young team like K-State is Gordon with the put back there goes against a veteran team and one of the best in the country in Baylor. Iowa State had the lead late inside 30 seconds last night in Morgantown but lost by six. That's off the mark for Davion Mitchell but kept alive tipped back out to Teague. Screen set by Vital. A drive by Teague and he floats it up a little too strong. Vital and no third opportunity. McGurl ahead looking for Miguel, but there to pick that off is Mitchell. Yeah, those are the type of things that can happen for Kansas State today. You know, careless turnovers. Baylor's going to be tough to score against as it is, but those ones that aren't necessarily forced by the things that they do, carelessness on your part. We've got to minimize those in a big way here this afternoon. Shot clock down to five. Step back, Teague from the corner. Good. I'll tell you what, not a tougher guard group in the country. Throw Butler out there with Teague and Mitchell, and you know the fifth-year senior transfer from UNC Asheville in Teague. Mark, he, he came back, tested the NBA waters. 
But he came to Baylor to play in an NCAA tournament. Obviously, last year in March, with things being shut down, he hasn't had that opportunity as a collegiate yet. Well, a much better possession there as Bradford stuffs it for K-State. That was K-State's fifth possession of their game on their first four possessions. They had turned it over three times. Well, Bradford, good-looking young player. And Bruce Weber, last two-plus games, has gone smaller with Bradford in there. And it's really helped their offense be more efficient, more spacing, more skilled guys on the perimeter make plays. Well, after Mitchell turned it over, McGurl shot well off the mark right side there. Wow. Macy Oteague and the foul. Well, we talked about T. We just toughness. He's really got natural leadership abilities. It's stuff right there. Pack reaches in. Obviously slaps that wrist and then, and then Teague just smoothly knocks that down. He's got a quick six points right here. Yeah, four point play right there. And it gives second rank Baylor an early five point lead. Rudy Williams in the game, number five for K-State. He has been really good off the bench so far this year for Bruce Weber. Yeah, it keeps getting better and better. Last two games, 16 against Milwaukee. 10 the other night in Ames against Iowa State. Shot it well. Five of seven from three in those two wins. Shot clock's at one. Got to put it up, Miguel. It's not going to find the rim. And that's going to take us to our first timeout. K-State turned it over three times on their first four possessions. And Baylor's opened up an early five-point edge. Baylor ball. Out of the timeout after what was a shot clock violation for Kansas State. Scott Drew's team without a couple of players today, including Adam Flagler, leading scorer, who's come off the bench every game, but pacing them with 15 points. He and Jordan Turner out for this game and did not make the trip up from Waco. And Flagler, obviously an important piece for Baylor off the bench. Scott Drew basically playing nine guys. Boy, team wide open again right there, Mark. What a start for Macy O.T. You know, Scott Drew, again, you can understand this, was concerned about their shape, uh, sharpness. It's been good so far, particularly on the defensive end for Bam. And the turnover right there. He talked about maybe substituting more liberally early in the game and not having Flagler may affect that, but they don't need him right now. Already double-digit scoring for Macy O.T. Just over five minutes into the game, and K-State needs a timeout. Well, the turnovers are killing K-State early. That's the fifth time they've turned it over, and they've allowed ten points on those turnovers already. I, I, I think that just this also tells you how good Baylor is. We haven't even talked about Butler yet this afternoon. There's T once again, obviously feeling it. This fifth-year senior plays with so much maturity, Mark. It's tough. It's, it's really been a terrific backcourt with synergy from day one when you throw Mitchell and Butler and Teague. And you saw that emerge from the beginning of the season last year. Well, he's three for three from beyond the arc already today, Teague is, which he had not really shot the three ball well, just 28% coming in, though his team in general, Baylor, had shot the ball from beyond the arc very well to start the season in their four games. Well, these guys, I mean, obviously Teague offensively is off to an unbelievable start here. But these are all two-way players, Mark. I mean, defensively, not just good, but these three are elite defenders. You can make an argument the best backcourt in the nation. Well, I would say that be because of what we're just talking about. The ability at both ends of the floor at a high level. I mean, it's... It's impressive. It's really hard to run your stuff. And that's going to be tough as this game progresses for a young K-State team. Right now, it's a 10-0 run for Baylor. Shot clock in one, and for the second time already in this game, a shot clock violation against Kansas State. 
so sound defensively communication mark they contain the ball but still have ball pressure and there's a switch right there and Baylor has those fours and fives who are athletic enough skilled enough that they can cover the perimeter for short stretches as well as you saw in that possession now he checked for Teague and a travel after the rebound by Baylor's Thamba but Teague had hit three in a row from beyond the arc. Hey. Came up short on that one. Why not, right, at this point? Well, our, our question right at the top of the show, Brendan, was how big a deal is it that Baylor hasn't played in 10 days? And that was a legitimate concern for Scott Drew. He acknowledged that. But they have come out looking really sharp. Well, we also talked to him about this. I mean, obviously, with the experience they have coming back, Big shot right there. It is a two-point shot, not a three for Antonio Gordon off the bench for the Wildcats. Going back to Baylor, the, their experience, right, particularly at the guard position, makes you think that they can overcome the, the layoff stretch. And one opportunity for Flo Thamba. A good start for Scott Drew's team. If there was concern because they went five days really without practicing. They came back to practice on Thursday. And Scott Drew said to us last night, if we had to have played a game on Thursday, we would have lost to anybody in the nation. It was not a good practice. He said we were a little better yesterday on Friday. And he, they've come out Saturday looking very good. They look like Baylor. Well, in a, a different situation, I'll tell you what, K-State right now is really getting it taken to them. But a different situation than what Bruce Weber is dealing with. Chachua put that back in. That's the fourth offensive rebound already for Baylor. Catch and shoot three. Rudy Williams. And that guy has been a stabilizer for them off the bench this year. The Juco transfer struggled early in practices with, with the demands at this level. Obviously, Coach Weber has high expectations at both ends of the floor. And after enough practice time, he's settled in. And he's been really good in games. Nice move there by Mitchell, the hesitation. Williams brings it ahead. That three Williams made last trip. He's now 8 of 14 in three-point shooting this year for K-State. Nice pass. Bradford came up short, but an offensive rebound for Deshaun Gordon. Boy, Williams has got Mitchell all over and gets a screen and could not get it to Bradford again just the ball pressure from Baylor LJ Cryer is in the game and from the short corner he knocks one home for the true freshman out of Katy Texas yeah typically freshmen at Baylor don't get a lot of run a lot of those guys will redshirt wait their turn but not Cryer he's ready to play right now and score Second bucket for Gordon. Nice feed from freshman Selton Miguel. That's it to 23-11. But Baylor, if you're worried about the shooting coming in after the layoff, they've hit nine of their first 13 shots. So shooting right around 70%. We got a push and a foul on the floor. No basket for Thamba. Thamba was hoping he had a chance for a three-point play there. 11:48 to play first half for Manhattan, and it's Baylor by 12. Number two, Baylor out to a 12-point lead with 11.48 to go for Manhattan, Kansas. Mark Neely along with Brendan Manzer. And Baylor out to a quick start. A team ranked second in the nation behind number one, Gonzaga. Of course, Baylor spent five weeks last year at number one. Mark Vidal, big part of this team with his rebounding. Picked to win the Big 12 for the first time ever. Preseason player of the year, Jared Butler. We know what you get with Teague and what you get with Vidal. And there's no question that this is one of the top teams in the nation that has a chance to win a, their first national title. They're, uh, they're legit. I, and it's impressive what they've done here early in this game after the layoff. They, just, they haven't skipped a beat. I mean, you're concerned maybe not being as sharp defensively or offensively, taking quick shots. But, Mark, here's, here's what's happening with Baylor. This is one of the things offensively that makes them so special. They have those great guards. But they get downhill and they attack you off the bounce first. And they work inside it. They're not a team that settles for the three, even though they can shoot it well. Vital nearly had a steal there. In fact, may have gotten a steal. 
but gave it back and a three left side is off the heel from Miguel and Antonio Gordon was out of bounds it's Baylor ball yeah watch this right here and again things downhill Butler keeps his dribble alive pick and roll K-State slow to rotate and you have skilled basketball players making the right plays at the right time and then the athleticism right there well you saw Miguel number two he got over he's six four you got Chachua who is at six eight and uh, Selton Miguel really had no chance there and they there are again with Chachua hey go right back to it a little bit of rub right there and roll Jonathan Chawa Chachua 6'8 sophomore transfer from UNLV. It's like uh, deja vu all over again. So this time it was an Antonio Gordon who had the misfortune of trying to stop that. Here's Gordon from the short corner left side. He's had a decent start offensively today. Six points for Antonio Gordon off the K-State bench. Yeah, his minutes have been down a little bit the last couple of games because K-State has gone smaller around Bradford. He's off to a good start. Well, Davion Mitchell adds a three. He's been hitting about 60% of his three-point opportunities this year. A guy known for his defense, but last year, Mark, because of Macy Oteague and Jared Butler, Mitchell kind of got lost in the shuffle in terms of maybe recognition of his offensive ability. Really is an improved shooter since he transferred from Auburn to Baylor and, and like a lot of these guys for Scott Drew over the years Mark I mean, you've seen it those red shirt years are not just to get them older they get better more skilled their weaknesses improve this is unbelievable the player development that happens within the Baylor Bear program well, no question what Scott Drew has put together in Waco one of the best jobs we've ever seen. I don't think that's hyperbole. That's a three miss by McGurl. They've hit their last six from the field, and that ends right there. Just a little bit long from Butler. Lingard. Lingard had a nice game against Iowa State. At 10 points, hit all four of his shots in their win in Ames. Yeah, good, good news with him is three-year Juco kid, maybe four, depending on if you... Oh, Shatua. Jeez. And right now, Baylor's just... You would think this team has not missed a beat after missing and not playing in 10 days. Well, clicking on all cylinders. You cannot hide... Nice offense right there, K-State. You cannot hide a... Weak defender when you play baby you, you can't hide anybody because they can hurt you at all five spots mostly predicated on the tremendous decision making out front from those elite guards here's a drive by vital now he gets in on the axe it looks like case I should say Baylor I believe called the timeout there Vital gets his first bucket of the day. 34-15 lead for Baylor on the good side for K-State. Of their seven field goals, made field goals, six they have assisted on. However, their three-point shooting, they're only one of six. Bruce Weber has a young team, man. That's not an excuse. It's just, it's a fact. And they're starting three freshmen against the national championship contender and other key players you know Antonio Gordon sophomore Deshaun Gordon sophomore there's your there's your youth movement uh, right there Mark they, they have 14 players on the roster and 11 are underclassmen so freshman and sophomore in 74 percent of the minutes there's only one senior on the on the squad and that's Mike McGurl and they've had three true freshmen starting in back-to-back -back games. That's the first time they have done that ever in Big 12 play, in conference play, where they've started three true freshmen. 
That was the case again today. It was the case Tuesday in Ames. Antonio Gordon lost the dribble. Vidal scoops it up. We don't see Mark Vidal bring the ball up the floor a whole lot. He gets the opportunity there. And he's trying to take it to the rim and is foul. Mark Vidal says, hey, I can back like a guard if you need me to. <laughs> well, again, we just talked about it. <laughs> Dribbled it off his knee, kept the dribble. These Baylor players, uh, they get they get better. I mean, these handles are better certainly than they were two years ago. And here's what I love about Mike. First of all, there's not a more impactful or productive six points and seven rebounds in the country. No question. Timeout. We'll pick up that subject when we come back. 34-15, Baylor. Mark Vidal's hit the line as we come back from the break. And we were visiting and chatting about Mark Vidal. And, and I'll continue the conversation about Vidal with this. On the condition of anonymity, and, and speaking with many other Big 12 coaches, when we talk about Baylor, the, one of the first guys they mentioned is, I would love to have Mark Vidal on my team. He's that impactful. Even though he doesn't score a lot of points, everything us off the charts. Well, he could literally guard one through five. Yep. Like, literally, at a, at a pretty high level. Tremendous energy, and it, it's contagious to his teammates. I mean, he makes all the winning plays. I mean, we, we talked about, as you just mentioned, his numbers, and he's 6.7 rebounds. But he is way, way more than that. And I'll, I'll tell you something else. When he drove it at that last possession, yeah. If it's a five-point game, he, he won't do that. You'll notice no. he's not a great shooter. Notice when he takes a three, they're up 20. Right, he's he only picked. taken one of those all year. So the, the, I bring that up because he understands exactly who he is. Davion Mitchell, a three from the corner. And they stop play as the net got tangled up. So that's going to take us to another break. But Davion Mitchell. Speaking of great defenders, but this is a guy who can also score. Well, Mark, I think Baylor has answered the question. Will they come off the layoff flat? Uh, that is a big... Bramlage Coliseum in Manhattan. 38-17, Baylor. Bruce Weber, just a long chat with his team there. We certainly, we still got a lot of basketball to play. There's over 27 minutes to go in, in game time here, but a, a sizable deficit. What was on Bruce Weber's mind for his team? Well, first and foremost, if you know Bruce Weber, I mean, nobody coaches harder than he does. I mean, it, time and score does not matter. Um, and he knows he's got a young ball club. Their K-State team is smart. You know, we have the opportunity covering this league. We've been around these coaches. We, we kind of know their game day routines, and everybody's shoot-arounds has some similarities and differences. But K-State teams are as prepared and, and more so for their opponents maybe better than any. And when you have a young team, that makes it a little more difficult because that's more to absorb. And Bruce Weber has to kind of back off of that a little bit. But he's going to continue to coach and teach. He probably talked about in that timeout. Ball movement on the offensive end. You, you can't turn it over. Defensively, we've got to be solid. And we've got to try to win seconds. For example, this media timeout to the next media timeout. Have some positive things to discuss as a young group when we come back over here to the sideline. Teak from the corners off the front rim. Thamba, an offensive rebound. Passes out of the double team. Butler. Vital in offensive board. Thamba kept the pivot foot, uses the dribble. Mitchell jump stop, but he traveled. Well, aside from the defensive board play, pretty good defensive possession right there for K-State. Getting to shooters keeping in front, and then when Mitchell was able to get to the heart of the defense, good rotation and help right there. It's the 23rd possession of the game for Baylor, and they've come away with points on all but eight of those today. 
girl off from the corner. Teague able to keep the dribble, even though Bradford almost came away with a steal. Vital from the left elbow knocks it down. And that, you start to get towards the uh, the edge of his range, but knowing the lead they have, he's, he says, hey, I'm open. I'm going to put that up. Well, obviously, K-State is going to be conservative on a closeout on Biden, uh, which you should. And if he can show, keep showing that periodically, Mark, right? it's just, again, it's just another thing that makes Baylor tough. And Bradford, chance for a three-point play. So Baylor, assuming they continue to play well here, if they're able to get away today, Mark, with a road win in the Big 12, and, and then you've got a couple of games over the holidays, hopefully get your group together, practice. You're not in school, so opportunity to be together more. And it lends itself to be a very positive thing heading into further conference play in January. See Matthew Meyer in the game for Baylor. Foul on the second opportunity. Free throw coming from ACO Teague. Teague hit his first three three point shots of the game. So right now he's leading all scores with a dozen points. Three point lead for Baylor with just over five minutes to play in the first half. Conference opener for the Bears. They were supposed to open conference against Texas last week, and that game postponed. Baylor's next conference game after this one is going to be against Iowa State January 2nd. The girl and Meyer, he bumps into Meyer. That's going to be a foul on the junior, Matthew Meyer. Myers become an, another good piece off the bench for Scott Drew. That's a, that's a 6'9 wing right there. Still has some continued work on the defensive end. You know, if he's guarding a guy like McGurl, he needs to have a bigger cushion to just use his size to contain. But he's definitely offensively talented. Now the officials discussing this. There was a whistle before Selton Miguel shot that three and hit it. We see Jerry Pollard, Ray Natilli, part of our officiating crew. We're going to go to the monitor. There must have been something away from the ball, Brendan, that I believe Jerry Pollard on the baseline saw that brought the first whistle. Well, the official, the, as Pollard blew the whistle, it went before the shot was taken. in the middle lane there, Mark. Bradford and Vidal and Joshua. That's, that's a lot for Bradford to handle. Yes, it is. And you see Jerry Pollard there towards the sideline. The baseline official is Ray Natilli. Their arms go up about the same time, but I think they saw different plays that they were officiating on. I think that Tilly was making the call. Was, was Pollard signaling three on the shot from the top of the key? So they are going to count the basket. It is a three for Selton Miguel. And it will stay Baylor ball. Well, I, I was wrong, obviously. I, I, I thought the whistle, the whistle was blown prior to. Uh, it's what it sure sounded like. Uh -huh. Three from the corner missed by Gordon. And the foul on K-State is Meyer knocked to the floor. So youth, youthful team right there. I mean, you, you get a shot to go, have a chance for a five or six point possession, right? That's what Bruce Weber's saying. That's a quick shot from the corner. And I don't need that a bounce play. Again, 
young teams. It takes them a while to have that feel mark for momentum, time, and score, those type of things. That's a 17 foul against the Wildcats, so a one and one upcoming here from Matthew Beyer. It's three of six from the line so far this year. And he got that to go. You know you're having a good first half as a team when that free throw falls. <laughs> Usually that's when you were at home. Yeah. Like, a, like on a golf course, you get that member bounce, you know, on, a, on an errant drive. You know, Meyer had a good game in here last year. Yeah, yeah. 19 points, which was a career high for him. You know, Baylor at the end of the season dealing with managing some injuries and such, and, and therefore he was able to get on the floor a little bit more. In the last nine or ten games a year, he really played well. And obviously one of them was here in Manhattan. Rudy Williams in a tight spot. Quick pass from Miguel looking for Bradford, but off the hands of the big fella. So the 11 turnovers now for K-State in this first half. T lost the handle, came back down with it. K-State thought there was a carry there, but now Teague underneath the bucket pulls it back out. Boy, and Baylor, Mark, continues to just pound the offensive glass. And they have been good at that for years. One of the most efficient in the country. There Tip good for Meyer. That's the ninth offensive rebound for Baylor in the game. K-State has a total of six rebounds. A drive and a block. Chachua. And a foul. Chalma Chachua. Offensive rebounding for Baylor. They've been all over the glass. Yeah, they, you know that coming in. You, you've got to put a body on, especially those perimeter jumpers. Long rebounds. Guys flying in for the perimeter. There's Meyer. Baylor still rolling. 3.33 to play in the half. It's a 20-point lead for Baylor. They did count that last bucket for K-State, calling a goaltend on Chalma Chachua. The drive by Rudy Williams. Like he was coming back off the glass. So they did indeed count that. John Wachach was had an interesting first half here. Does have eight points on four or five shooting. I'll tell you what, though, this is you know, small sample size here early in the year from him. But off the bench, I mean, he's 10 and 8 in 20 minutes. And it's been pretty consistent. Pretty consistent, too, for Bayley in the first half. Open three for LJ Cryer. Yeah, we started talking about Cryer earlier, Mark. I mean, it's a guy that could, do, like, can flat out score. Averaged 34 points a game last year in high school, almost scored 3,500 in his career. And it's a nice. Mixture, not a lot of pressure on him with those veteran guards that Baylor obviously has, but he's getting valuable, valuable opportunity to play some meaningful minutes uh, on this team, and that'll bode well in future years. He becomes more relied upon. He mentioned he had almost 3,500 points in high school. It was the fifth highest total in the history of Texas public school basketball. I mean, some really good players coming through the public schools in Texas. So there's a Meyer three. Going to the line, Chachua, who had a career-high 13 points, actually tied a career-high in their win over Stephen F. Austin in the last game in the NBA Global Academy down there. Moved to Australia for his final two high school seasons and had that season at UNLV. As you mentioned, he sat out last year, one of those players that had a chance to be around the program, practice. That certainly has paid off now in his first year playing for Scott Murray. Catch it, shoot three. This is from Gordon. Quick outlet, here comes Mitchell. Here's a lob. Chachua finishes it off. He's run the floor, too. 
Well, he's got the opportunity to get a new career high, and he may do it here in the first half. Boy, he's, he's got tremendous energy, Mark. And on, on a team full of guys with high motors. High motor, and that's a travel, Davion Mitchell. Watch this right here. Chatchel is going rim running right down the middle of the floor and gets behind the K-State defense. Of course, those Baylor guards continuing to make good decisions. But Chatchel, I mean, he's, he's really a great young man. Got 11 points, five or six from the field in this first half. Miguel. Looking for his second three of the game, not that time out of bounds. Who touched it last? Chance Moore says it's off K State. Off Surrey Lewis, true freshman, getting some time here in the first half for K State. So 70 seconds left in this first half. Baylor has led throughout. Fryer, the freshman, has eight. He knocks down another three. They just keep coming. Yeah. Baylor clicking on all cylinders, both ends here in the first half. And a bucket for McGurl. His first of the game. He had missed his first three from the field. They had all been three-point shots. Baylor can pretty much hold it for the final shot here. Mitchell. And that should count. And what a half for Baylor. Chachua ties his career high with 13 points in the first half with that buzzer beater. Again, smart decision making. Pass up to three, drive it. Another offensive rebound on that weak side for Baylor. Dominating performance here in the first half, Mark. On both ends of the floor, Baylor sharp, impressive. Chatua, we mentioned the 13 points. He goes six of seven from the field, had four rebounds as well. And they were very good, Baylor, as they often are, Brendan, and moving from defense to offense, generating a lot of offense with their defense. Well, the 56 points put up by Baylor in the first half, the most points they've scored in the first half of a game since December 17th of 2017. So three years ago against Savannah State when they scored 61 in the first half of that game. They didn't score 59 in the second half of their season opener this year against Louisiana. And they were clicking on all cylinders. Baylor is the team picked by the uh, coaches in the preseason poll to win the conference. Kansas was selected second. Uh, and uh, expectations, according to the preseason poll, low for Kansas State as they were picked last. Well, that's their youth, obviously. Uh, rebuilding mode. Coming off a Big 12 championship two years ago themselves. But Mark, a deep league, it is every year. It has additional depth this year with those guys coming back for Baylor. Obviously, Bill Self always in the mix, regardless of who's on his roster. But uh, I, I think in a small sample size here early in the season because of the lack of games that have been able to be played. But Big 12, uh, once again, I think we can all see elite conference and, and deep, I mean, no nights off. Hey, it's interesting to watch Ray Natilli and Jerry Pollard there with Davion Mitchell, Jerome Tang, one of the assistants for Baylor. I, I, I can tell what they're going over there. Remember there was a play in the first half when Mitchell was called for a travel when he thought he had jump stopped. And they were going through that right there. Jerome Tang was giving them a little demonstration as well. A little bit extra that we give you on Big 12 now on ESPN+.
And more of that includes what's ahead for Scott Drew's Baylor Bears. Here's the upcoming schedule. They have UAPB coming up here on ESPN Plus on the 21st, as well as Central Arkansas here on Big 12 now. Their next conference game is against Iowa State January 2nd, also on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. Then they have Oklahoma and TCU also in that gauntlet that we know, Brendan, as the Big 12 conference play. Kansas State won their conference opener on Tuesday night against Iowa State. Here's what's ahead for them. They have non-conference games here on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus against Jacksonville on the 21st. Then after Christmas on the 29th against Omaha before getting back into Big 12 play against TCU, Texas Tech, and Oklahoma State. Yeah, and after a tough game against Baylor today, those two against Jacksonville and Omaha will be, be welcomed by the K-State staff. But regardless of what happens in the second half, Keep in mind, I mean, K-State has a road win in the Big 12 already. They do, but what do you think was the message at the half from Bruce Weber? Well, I don't think I don't think he made any excuses with his young guys. Um, well, the, probably the biggest message among some strategic things would be just some toughness. Butler nearly traveled when he stumbled, and that bounces around off the backboard and in for Mitchell. Rich keep getting richer. That's another fortuitous bounce. But, but Mark, going back to K-State, the toughness part of it, obviously defense is where that shows up. And then on the offensive, it's just toughness with the basketball. They turned it over 12 times in the first half. Bradford and Thamba tangled up. Bradford kept it alive. Miguel finds McGurl, gets it back from McGurl, and banks in a three. <laughs> And K-State gets uh, one of their few breaks of this game. When you watch Baylor defensively, the moment you think you have a gap or an opportunity, they can test everything. And they make maximum effort, even on this bank shot. Look at Mitchell. Miguel will take that, though. I'm sure you had a few of those going in your day at Oklahoma State. <laughs> Banked one off. No, I never. I think my first shot I ever took uh, as a quote unquote shooter was an air ball, though. Yeah, you don't I mean, forget that I think one. I, was, I think I was a little amped. I remember being from the corner. But I, I usually drew iron and a lot of times in that. That's the only thing I could do, Mark. You know that. Well, that was no. pretty much the extent of my uh, skill set. Well, there, there's this game in a nutshell for K-State. The missed free throw by Butler, offensive rebound, Thamba. Butler gets it back, scores from the corner. Well, they've got multiple opportunities. We saw in the first half domination on the glass, and they'll make you pay. Deshaun Gordon came down with it, but had time to go back up and lay it in. But what we've talked about, there's a three from the corner for Mitchell. I don't think I've seen, nor have you seen, and that's a hard foul on Mitchell with Deshaun Gordon going to the rack. It's not like we've seen any lack of effort or egregious play from K-State. Quite frankly, they just were outmanned in the first half. Well, it, it's men and boys. And, and so you have a roster full of freshmen sophomores for K-State. So there's the mental side of it. There's the physical side of it. And then conversely, you have a team this year and a program traditionally that stays old. Two, three years at that age matters a lot. No question. And we have seen with the time we've been covering the Big 12 and you played in the conference, certainly there are teams that maybe near the bottom of the conference or pick near the bottom of the conference to come up and beat the top team or one of the top teams. And that's not to say on a different day K-State doesn't win this game, but when Baylor's playing as well as Baylor can, really, really hard for K-State to beat them anyway. Yeah, it'd be hard for anybody. In the yeah, league. exactly. In, a league in, full, in the country. A league yeah. full of excellent teams. You know, you, you go, you, you look at this roster. Teague's a fifth-year senior. 
Mitchell's a fourth year junior. I don't fifth year senior. Chachua is a sophomore, but he's a third year right. guy. I mean, it, it matters. And Baylor has done a great job over the years of staying on. Butler from Mitchell. Smooth. I mean, he's just so talented. He, just, he hadn't had to do much today. Yeah, Butler, six points. It's been a quiet six points, but there's... K-State making this a 29-point game, which was Baylor's lead at the break. Bounced off by T and into the arms of Pack. Jared Butler has not been asked to do a lot offensively for Baylor. Short from Gordon. Baylor foul. Going against Stomper. You know, Gordon hit that three on the last possession. You called the game Tuesday night, Iowa State. Hit 15 and 11. Yeah, his first career double double. Coming off a really nice game. And he, and he hasn't shot it great. Well, he's missed his last 11 three point shots coming in. That's the only side of his game that he had struggled the last few games. But, yeah, but what I was going to say, that, that's not going to continue. That's not going to be the trend with him. Nice play right there. Yeah, nice on the inbounds to Miguel. To put that high off the glass in it. So Miguel, part of that freshman trio starting right now for K State. Nice concentration right there. Absorbs a little contact from Meyer. Miguel, a true freshman, originally from Angola. And he's been in the starting lineup the last few games. In fact, first career start was on the Friday game against Milwaukee. With 17 points. With 7 of 14 in that game, he's been in the starting lineup since. Yeah, and that, that's what initiated or I guess makes K-State go small when you insert him in there, but I, but I like it by Bruce Webb. Definitely more potent offensively. Teague likes to put it up and it falls. Looked like, almost like he hesitated for just a fraction of a second, but still got it up. Well, see the ball moving right there. I mean, there's no hesitation, it doesn't stick. Pretty good ball movement there by the Wildcats. Bruce Weber has to like that possession. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been better offensively the second half. You know, one thing that can help with the young team, Mark, the second half, your, your offense is right in front of your bench. So Bruce Weber obviously can more easily communicate. Chachua's first opportunity of the half. 13 points in half number one, tying a career high. Seventeen footer. Teague was able to save it while he was tumbling out of bounds. Chachua gonna back down Surrey Lewis spins with the right hand off the heel grabbed by Pack comes the freshman guard out of Indianapolis one and done after the rebound by Cryer short from Cryer offensive rebound for T the offensive rebounds have been plentiful today for Baylor. Well, they're all conditioned to attack. It's tough when you play Baylor. But it hasn't just been in the interior. There's been a lot of long rebounds that have gone Baylor's way. Ah, the bucket there by Lewis Mitchell almost was able to steal that on the long pass. And Kansas State converts. And 14 for Miguel. Timeout, Baylor, and the K-State offense coming alive. Yeah, much better here the second half from the young Wildcats. A little 
transition for two of this ball movement right there. A little bit of ball movement. Ball hasn't stuck. And as, as a result, seeing that offense click a little better. Yeah, been much better. So, sometimes, obviously going into halftime, when you're young, you get regrouped. And they've had a couple of positive things happen, Mark. And when you're youthful, those go a long way. Your countenance changes, your confidence at least momentarily, much better. Hopefully they can continue to have some success on that end. To the miss by Meyer. Kansas State on an 11-2 run here. We're down by as many as 33 off the heel from McGurl. They have not had many second chance opportunities today. Cryer flips it to Meyer from the corner. And hit the side of the backboard. Pack. Another one and done for the Wildcats. Another quick shot there yeah, for the freshman. I just take that mark. Not the one you want. Obviously a long way to go. It would be tough to come back in this one, but it's some good work playing against a defense like this. You're not going to play against anyone that's better defensively. T cleans up the Butler miss. He has 17 points. Baylor's shooting has gotten to be uh, kind of at a low point today. They only hit two of their last 10 shots. They were smoking on fire throughout the first half. Spinning, shooting, couldn't finish it, but a nice move by Surrey Lewis, but get some help from the girl. Uh, Lewis right there with that right shoulder, isolated. Now, I've been watching in the last few possessions defensively. He's been pretty sound for the most part down here. Drive and a land for Mark Vital. As soon as Baylor, Mark, gets you in a help situation, uh, it's almost a done deal. They're going to get some kind of good look. As he turned the corner right there, Vital, smart. He's at that high post area. Just makes a dive towards the rim. Pretty play. Splash. Antonio Gordon, a swish. He's had a nice game off the bench for the Wildcats with nine points and has not missed a shot. Four of four from the field. Yeah, he's been really good offensively. We'll see when the ball goes in the basket. Little give and go. Butler getting it back and his foul going to the rim. Timeout. The K-State offense has looked better here at half number two in Manhattan. Well, Antonio Gordon, the sophomore, part of the youth movement at K-State. Shooting it well today. K-State playing better here in the second half. Jared Butler, the junior guard, headed to the line. If he hits this free throw, he will have his first career double-double. He has a career-high 10 assists. His previous career-high had been seven. And by the way, his career-high for rebounds is nine. He has nine points, 10 assists. And right there, that this officially becomes the first career double-double for Jared Butler, which I, I'll admit kind of took me for by surprise. But then you start thinking about it. I mean, he's not a huge rebounder. You got Vital and these other big guys. So he, his career high is nine. He's come close to that. But this is career high 10 assists for him as well today. Is it possible to have a quiet 10 assists? <laughs> is it possible I'm, to have a quiet game and have your first career double double? <laughs> you know, so, so here, here's why, Mark. Yeah. I mean, why he is. And I did, when I watch him play, he's just smooth. I mean, things seem, obviously, it's not easy. He makes it look easy. He can score, take you off the bounce, he can shoot it, create help situations. But he doesn't force things. He really no. takes what the defense gives and plays within, look at that right there. Plays within what Baylor's trying to do. Thamba stepped on the baseline, and it's out of bounds to K-State. More from Manhattan when we come back after this timeout. It's on Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. Jared Butler, first career double double today. Career high 10 assists, 10 points. He's the preseason conference player of the year in the Big 12, a preseason All American. Last year, All Big 12 first team, unanimous selection, third team All American. 
And he's a junior, but he's a young junior. And what I mean by that, Brendan, is he just turned 20 years old in August. So from a basketball standpoint, he's still a pretty young guy. Uh, in, in a program or on a team with older guys. Correct. Talked about yeah. the red shirt years. And th that's, to me, that also says a lot. The, the, the improvement in his game since his freshman year. Remember, was it when Tristan Clark got hurt that year that he, yes. I mean, he, he went into the starting line off when Clark injured the knee. And by the way, Tristan Clark recently retired. We wish him the best. He's going to finish his degree at Baylor studying sword si uh, sports psychology. There's the lay in for Rudy Williams. But when Tristan Clark got hurt, is when Jared Butler went into the starting lineup for Scott Drew. Yeah, the, the other thing, he's always been a good athlete. I mean, he was a top 100 player. But he but, has developed it right. even more but since. Like, his explosiveness is, um, for a guy who's already a good athlete, is noticeable that it has gotten um, quicker, better, stronger. Fifth three, by the way, today for T. Has 21 points, 10 minutes to go, second half. Baylor's led by as many as 33. You know what I'm saying on Butler, though? Like, for a guy who was already a good athlete, I'm saying, like, his athleticism is improved. No question. No question. He, he certainly, he, he wasn't overweight by any stretch, he, but he's got even more lean, quick. This guy's going to be a, a good pro someday and obviously had a chance uh, if he had so selected to try pro ball last offseason, took his name back out. And he and, and made a great choice, I think, in doing so. Again, he's just, he just turned 20 in August. And he'd have been drafted. Yes. Uh, no, I don't think he should but, have. But Baylor had a chance to get to a Final Four last year. Right? Not just a, win a national chance, championship. Yeah, a yeah. good chance. And so they obviously feel like there's unfinished business. T just uh, tested the waters as well. Butler finds Chachua. Offensive rebound, Thamba. Got the two bigs in at the same time, and there's a crowd there, and it's not a tie-up, it's a foul. Capacity, which means uh, not quite 1,900 fans allowed through the month of December at Bramwich Coliseum. Mark, you just mentioned Baylor. With Bamba, Chachua in there together at the same time. Yeah. Typically they split minutes at that five. A great opportunity to play them together. So obviously as you go through Big 12 play, i.e. West Virginia. Yes. You guys might be out there together, depending on NCAA tournament matchups. You got Colder and Sheepway playing at the same time for West Virginia. You got to have something to match up, right? You hope you have something to match up. Butler. So for Jared Butler now a dozen points to go along with his 12 assist. A 12 and 12 game right now for Jared Butler. Who, by the way, has three rebounds if you were thinking triple double. So he's got a lot of work to do on the boards to reach that. Batted around into the hands of Mitchell and up ahead. Teague slams it. 23 for Maceo Teague. Chachua got a piece of that, but also a piece of Antonio Gordon. Well, Marcus, it was uh, Macy Oteague early, right? They got Baylor rolling on the offensive end. It's kind of changed hands a little bit with Butler the second half. But Teague, the flush right there. Teague had a 15-point game at K-State in February, so the last time he was on this floor, and he's bettered that today with 23, hitting five of his eight three-point shots. He has nine boards, so he's close to a double-double as well. well K 
State and Baylor have pretty much played even here in the second half. So what was a 56-27, 29-point lead for Baylor at the break. Myers, pivot foot, shuffled, and a timeout. What a day it's been, though, for Macy Oteague. Well, also, Jared Butler, Mark, Teague the first half, Butler the second half getting his, and Baylor has cruised this afternoon. K-State basketball shared the 2013 conference regular season title with Kansas and the number one in 19 with Texas Tech. So we look at the AP top 25, Big Ten has seven in the top 25, Big 12 with five, but if you got Kansas, Baylor, and West Virginia all in the top eight, and if you chop it to the top 15, then you have Big 12 with the most teams, with a third of those, five of the 15. Half your leagues in the top 15. So just over seven and a half minutes to go. This is the conference opener for Baylor. Of course, their game against Texas on Sunday was postponed. So Texas is the only team now in the Big 12 yet to play a conference game. Williams tried to punch that in. Found Gordon down low, and now the other Gordon, Antonio Gordon, lays it in. He has 13. Yeah, very good game. Bright spot. Certainly today for K-State. Gordon hasn't missed a shot. He's 5 for 5. Antonio Gordon, Butler foul going to the rim. Texas will play tomorrow against Oklahoma State. Cade Cunningham, the impressive freshman, and the Cowboys coming off a one-point loss at home to TCU. And the, uh, the road for Mike Boyd's team, conference-wise, starts continues with Texas, but it's a grind after that for them as well. That was a a big game Wednesday night for Oklahoma State. Nine-point lead. TCU played great down the stretch, 7-0 run. That's a, you know you talk about K-State being young. Oklahoma State, as talented as they are, young. Only Isaac Likely with more than one year of. Division one experience. And that's a big game at Texas because you Texas is good Mark I mean, as you know and the biggest reason is those veteran guards and Courtney Ramey And add in a freshman like Greg Brown. Yeah, Matt Coleman obviously Antonio Gordon six for six from the field today But after Texas the road uh, still difficult for Oklahoma State as you would expect in, in conference play you know, co coaches obviously have to take it one at a time, but just like us, they look at those stretches. So, Oklahoma, behind Texas, Oklahoma State has Texas Tech and West Virginia. There's three of those five top 15 coming up for Oklahoma State. Blocking foul. Going against Davion Mitchell. Antonio Gordon, six for six from the field. Watch him right here. Nice job. See, his hands are up. Flashes at that high post area. Makes himself available in that window. Sometimes those big guys will hide behind a defender. You know, a direct line from your pass to them. Gordon slides just to the open spot. He's played really well. Gordon. Nice. Foul. No shot. That was blocked away. That won't count against him, but put him at the line for two shots with exactly six minutes to go. And Gordon got good minutes last year yeah, as a freshman. Fellow freshman Tavius Murphy was dealing with some injury issues that gave him even more opportunity to get some floor time. Career high points for Antonio Gordon. And here's what I like about his performance in addition to what he's done production-wise, Mark, is that his minutes have been down a little bit the last couple of games with Miguel going in there more and Bruce Weber playing, quote-unquote, smaller. But Gordon didn't let that affect him. He's played well today, not soaking, not worrying about it. Hey, by the way, if you just count the score in the second half, they're tied at 33. So K-State has played 
Baylor absolutely even to this point in the second half with five and a half minutes to go. And I know that's Bruce Weber is going to say, yeah, so what? We got to win games. I understand that. But his team in the second half has looked much better. Yeah, and, and he, he will break that up after bringing up the things that got him the deficit in the first place. I think you've got to bring up the positives, too. Obviously, Baylor probably has lacked the same intensity here in the second half, but it's a natural reaction to take the foot off the gas pedal a little bit. But it's not up. like they yeah. came unsound no, defensively all of a sudden. Right. Some of the intensity may have dropped. The largest lead has been 33, and it's 29 now, which was their lead at, at the half. Gordon, still perfect from the field as he improves on his career high now with 18 points. Now that wasn't a great D, but again, Gordon flash, hands up. Yeah, Gordon's game today, that, it's going to pay dividends, obviously, for him and his confidence, but just as important how the coaching staff feels about him moving forward. Laid in by Matthew Meyer. Well, Antonio Gordon had started four consecutive games before he came off the bench in last Friday's game, eight days ago against Milwaukee. He's been coming off the bench since. Now he started nine games a year ago. Foul committed by Dejuan Gordon. Well, Baylor, I mentioned it, Mark. I don't know of any team in the country that forces help consistently better than Baylor. So you get Teague turning the corner. Gordon's got to rotate over. That pack will learn as time goes on that when you're on the weak side and you're the most weak side perimeter player, you have to drop. Because that's a habit pass right there from those guys driving it. And he'll learn over time. He got caught hanging up out on the perimeter. That's a youthful thing defensively. Bruce Weber, an excellent defensive teaching coach, and those type of things will get better. Well, the two guys who primarily handled the ball last year, Sloan and John, are gone. Nigel Pack, a true freshman, Weber really likes, loves his fundamentals, loves his savvy. He jumps up to 31 for the Bears. Is Pack. Miguel to Antonio Gordon. We weren't seeing a lot of that in the first half from K State. Under three and a half minutes to go. Baylor's Going to improve to 5-0 and, oh and win their conference opener. Davion Mitchell got it. That's his sixth three of the game. Six for ten. He's got 20 points. And Baylor is a team 14 of 30 in three-point shooting. You see how Mitchell and T were sharing it there. Just playing with one another unselfishly. Baylor's calling a timeout, but just to switch out players here. K-State fans, you've got to be patient with these young players. There's some upside in the future. Freshman to sophomore right there. And so what I, what I was looking for with them early, Mark, was uh, you know, maybe some uncharacteristic defensive breakdowns because of layoff. Had none of those. And then sometimes when you've lost a little shape or you haven't been maybe practicing as much, you settle for the three more because it's kind of the easier way to run your offense. They didn't do that. I mean, turning the corner on ball screens, pressure on K-State, great ball movement, touches inside. It was, it was offense like they hadn't had the layoff, to be real honest with you. No, it didn't show at all. Run in, hit by Antonio Gordon. Well, he's been locked in today. 
Scott Drew, I would assume, has to be uh, pretty pleased with what he has seen, and I'm sure he had some of the same questions that we did, and we asked him about that last night when we visited. Concerns about having not played in that length of time, and he said, oh, yeah, no doubt. But, and we talked to him about this, he said, I do feel good with... Yeah, there's a bucket for Zach Loveday, a true freshman for Baylor. He said, I do feel good about the uh, guard group I have, the leadership there. And what today shows is what we already do. Baylor, A, Baylor's good. And then B, it also confirms the leadership and toughness of this team. Under two minutes to go. Baylor flirting with the century mark in Manhattan. Then they scored 112 in the season opener against Louisiana. Won that game 112-86. Teague has it stripped, stolen by McGurl. McGurl taking it all the way to the rim, but unable to finish, able to get it back when Meyer lost it. Jumper goes up off the glass for Miguel. Antonio Gordon's been the man on the spot today for K-State. Gets it back out to Pack. Touch that last. They look at each other. Who are they going to give it to? They're going to keep it with K-State. Pack's had a tough day. But here's what I like about him. He's got some toughness to him, some poise. He's got intellect as a basketball player. And I think he's going to be really good for Bruce Webb. Drew Honus, walk on has come in the game. K State, number 14. So has Joe Petrakis, the other walk on. Antonio Gordon gets it back for the Wildcats. And one. Antonio Gordon, who has 23 points, looks to add to his career high total. I like it. We spent some time obviously talking about him here down the stretch of the second half. But again, a great bite, bright spot, motor running really good. You have a day like today, obviously you want to win, you wish your team played better, but he'll have a little hop in his step when he goes to practice tomorrow. 98 points for Baylor. It's the most points that they have scored against K-State ever in a game. Miguel fouled by Meyer, who was not going to give up the easy slam. Yeah, Meyer hustles to get back to contest, but watch the freshman Miguel. So here comes Meyer. He's going to challenge him. Miguel knows it. Boom. And he goes strong right there. He didn't shy away from it. Two shots. Here we go. A nice effort by both guys, to be honest. I like Miguel. A lot of guys get in there and they were worried about getting their stuff sent back to the first row. And he attacked the rim with strength. Got a walk on Jackson Boffitt also in the game for Baylor. Rebound there for Loveday. Baylor hits the century mark. Last conference game that they scored 100 back in 2016 was an overtime game against Iowa State. And Baylor's going to improve to 5 0, win their conference opener. And K State drops to 3 5 and 1 and 1 in conference play. Baylor coming back after the, and not playing in 10 days due to COVID protocol. And Scott Drew's team did not miss a beat. Impressive. I, it really was. They were not flat. They were sharp at both ends. That suffocating defense at all five spots. And that really got them rolling on the offense. I mean, it was Teague early, Mark, as we talked about. Butler was great in the second half. And, 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 and uh, first career double double for Jared Butler, thanks to all those assists today. Yeah, we. 
you and I laughed about it, right? A, a, a quiet 10 assists. There's Teague early, knocking it down. As we mentioned, he was really the catalyst offensively. Mid-range game, a dime, one of those 10 assists from Butler to Teague off the down screen. A lot of weapons. One thing Bader does well, Mark, is they really share it. And they also know the matchup opportunities, who has the hot hand. And again, it was Teague early on. Butler with that double-double, 14 points, finished with a career-high 13 assists. And Baylor hits the century mark and wins it over K-State, 100-69. to 69. What does K-State take away from this one? Well, you're playing one of the best teams in the country, and you can't get off to a slow start. And it was over early, but Antonio Gordon was good. The second half offensively was better. Um, Hey, I remind them, if I'm Coach Weber, you have a road win in the Big 12. They all count the same. You got a couple non-conference games and some practice time to get better, and you just ran into a team that is a high-level performer at both ends of the floor, as good as there is in the country, without a doubt. So number two, Baylor, goes on the road, and they win in Manhattan 100-69 to over Kansas State. No question. Baylor did not miss a beat after not playing in 10 days. Chachua had a big start. The three-point shot was also big for Baylor. As they don't miss a beat. They win it 100 to 69. That's going to take care of things from this side. For Brendan Manzer and our entire crew, I'm Mark Neely. Thanks so much for sharing this one with us. So long from Manhattan.